Hello and welcome. So this is our second video in the series of Internal Audit Practitioner. And in this video, we are covering Domain 2 of the IAP, which is a pathway to the Certified Internal Auditor. So let's start with our customary practice of asking some interesting questions. And all along the line, we'll try to get the answers to those questions. What are the fundamental concepts of risk and the effectiveness of risk management within process and functions? What are the internal control concepts and types of controls? What are the globally accepted internal control frameworks? What are the fraud risks, types of frauds? The potential for occurrence of fraud, uh, for, that is the red flags and etc. And how to determine whether fraud risk requires special consideration when conducting an engagement. So let's refresh ourselves with the overall IEP syllabus once again and the five domains and how many objectives are there. And then we'll uh, start with the domain two specifically. So we had uh, the first domain covered already internal audit attributes, having the five objectives uh, and the standard series 1000. Uh, covering the 20% of the course. And today we are covering nature of work, four objectives, 2100 series of standards, and engagement planning, domain three, having five objects, five objectives and 2200 series of standards. Then uh, domain four is engagement communication, three objectives, 2400 series of standards. And then the fifth is engagement work, having six objectives, and the standard series of 2300 covering the overall 25% of the course. There are 20, overall 23 objectives in the five domains. Also, don't forget to visit my channel, Audit Strategy, and so you can get all the videos of standards we have already covered and which I will be referring you during the course of this video. So in order to cover domain two, uh, nature of work, uh, you may refer to my videos on standard 2100, nature of work, standard 2110, governance, uh, 2120, which is about risk management, and 2130 is on the controls. The four objectives in domain one are define fundamental concepts of risk and effectiveness of risk management within process and processes and functions. Uh, then we have the second objective, describe internal control concepts, types of controls, and globally accepted internal control frameworks. Third is identify the effectiveness, effectiveness and efficiency of internal controls. And the fourth is recognize fraud risk, types of fraud, the potential for occurrence of fraud, that is red flags, and determine whether fraud risk requires special consideration when conducting an engagement. So we'll just double click each one of them and get more understanding about each objective and understand uh, and clarify our concept. So with reference to our first objective, which is about the definition of uh, defining the fundamental concepts of the risk and the effectiveness of the risk management within the process and functions, uh, we let's first understand the definition of risk and the risk management. The risk is the possibility of an event occurring that will have an impact on the achievement of objectives. Risk is measured in terms of impact and likelihood. And risk appetite is the level of risk that an organization is willing to accept. While the risk management is a process to identify, assess, manage and control potential events or situations to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of the organization's objectives. So just take an example of what is risk. Uh, so for example, if an organization is working in an environment uh, where there is a risk of fire. So risk of fire can have an impact on the organization's assets or inventory. So the organization needs to manage the risk. So that risk of fire can be managed in many ways. Uh, for example, uh, there can be a firefighting system which can be installed. Uh, there is a possibility of keeping uh, an overall system of fire hydrants 
uh, which will mitigate uh, the risk. Uh, there is a possibility of having preventive controls in the area where this is happening so that the, the more combustible items are, are keeping away or chemicals are keeping away so that the risk of fire can be mitigated. The expiry of chemicals is reviewed very regularly so that is an SOP part is called preventive control. So you can have a lot of risk management techniques to prevent the risk of fire uh, from happening. So the basic requirement of a standard 2100 is that the internal audit activity must evaluate the effectiveness and contribute to the improvement of risk management processes. The internal audit activity must evaluate risk exposures uh, relating to the organization's governance, operations and information systems regarding the achievement of the organization's strategic objectives, reliability and integrity of financial and operational information effectiveness and efficiency of operations and programs, safeguarding of assets, compliance with laws, regulations, policies, procedures and contracts. The internal audit activity must evaluate the potential for occurrence of fraud and how the organization manages risk of fraud. So let's understand more the first objective of domain two, which is regarding defining the fundamental concepts of the risk and effectiveness of risk management within the processes and functions. So internal audit activity must evaluate and contribute to the improvement of the organization's governance, risk management and control processes. You can remember these three with the name with GRC. So governance, risk management and control processes. How it will be done? It will be done by using a systematic, disciplined and risk-based approach. So when we say risk-based approach, so you will go for a higher risk first focus on the higher risk and key risk which is having a bigger impact as we have understood in the definition of risk that the impact and likelihood is more important. So the impact is higher and the likelihood is higher that means that that is a risk based approach you need to take. So, so the internal auditor should be proactive, evaluate the future impact and the new perspective to improve organizations processes. For example, a current practice, it is not accepted only considering that it is being done since the start. So you cannot e accept a practice because, okay, since start we are doing the same thing. Need to find out new ways. So uh, because existing and new risks should be assessed. Always there are, the, there are possibilities that risks are also uh, uh, being uh, arriving or being, being, we are being exposed to the risk in, in different ways. So, for example, if you are moving to the automation, so automation exposes you to new, new risk like, like cybersecurity risk. Uh, similarly, uh, if you are reducing the manual intervention, you are getting a benefit for exposing yourself to another risk. So, you need to keep mitigating those risks, but keep adopting the new things because they will give you new avenues to move forward. Uh, a credit policy is a good example uh, that there was a time or still there are some many organizations where credit policy is being monitored uh, manually by maybe a, a department or a specific section. Uh, but however, you can automate the whole credit policy and put it in the system and system will be managing your credit periods or if you are giving any, any credit limits to your uh, 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 debtors, then you need to uh, you don't have to bother about that because your system is controlling that. You need to just keep verifying the system controls if they are working efficiently and effectively. Similarly, the risk of fire. If you have a risk of fire, uh, you need to see how you can mitigate the risk of fire using a systematic and disciplined approach. And again, go for the higher risk. The risk of fire can be in various locations, but which is the most valuable part the risk-based approach will help you in getting there and in a spending money in the right direction rather than if you are trying to cover the whole, the 100% of the risk, then that will be uh, having an impact on the cost as well. So need to keep a balance of value for money, go for uh, this using a risk-based approach. In relevance to risk management, the internal audit activity must 
assess and make appropriate recommendations to improve the organization's governance processes for number one, overseeing risk management and control, number two, communicating risk and control information to appropriate areas of the organization, number three, coordinating the activities in order to report to the stakeholders. So determining whether risk management processes are effective is a judgment resulting from the internal auditor's assessment uh, that organizational objectives support and align with the organization's mission, significant risks are identified and assessed, appropriate risk responses are selected that align risk with the organization's risk appetite, and relevant risk information is captured and communicated in a timely manner across the organization, enabling staff management and the board to carry out their responsibilities. The internal audit activity may gather the information to support this assessment during multiple engagements. The results of these engagements, when viewed together collectively, provide an understanding of the organization's risk management processes and their effectiveness. Risk management processes are monitored through ongoing management activities, separate evaluations or both. So we'll move forward in domain two and we'll cover the objective second and third, which are both relevant to the controls. So the second objective is describe internal control concepts, types of controls, and globally accepted internal control frameworks. And the third is identify the effectiveness and efficiency of internal controls. So let's see the definition of controls first. So control is any action taken by the management, the board and other parties to manage risk and increase the likelihood that established objectives and goals will be achieved. So management plans, organizes and directs the performance of sufficient actions to provide reasonable assurance that ob objectives and goals will be achieved. So let's take an example that when you move any object from your premises, office, factory, it passes through gate which has controls. So there are gate controls for such a movement. So this movement needs con approvals. Okay, there has to be a gate pass number one should be created created by someone, reviewed by someone, approved by someone. It required um, scans or maybe register entries. Uh, there is a CCTV recording on the gate so that uh, anything which is crossing, uh, there is a recording for that. And then truck number, driver number or whatever uh, vehicle is moving that is also recorded there. In, and even the department which is moving the representative of the department, its name and the purpose of such movement. So these are all called controls. Uh, for moving any object from one premises to another premises. So we got to know the definition of controls. Now let's have an understanding of the definition of control environment. The attitude and actions of the board and management regarding the importance of controls within the organization is control environment. The control environment provides the discipline and structure for the achievement of the primary objective of the system of internal control. The control environment includes the following elements, the integrity and ethical values, management's philosophy and operating style, organizations, organizational culture uh, or structure, the assignment of authority and responsibility, human resource policies and practices, and the competence of the personnel, so hiring, recruitment part is so important and affecting the control environment as well. So we know the controls now, how it is defined, the control environment. Now let's have a look at the control processes definition. The policies, procedures, both manual and automated, automated and activities that are part of the control of the control framework designed and operated to ensure that risk are contained within the level that an organization is willing to accept. The internal audit activity must assist the organization in maintaining effective controls by evaluating their effectiveness and efficiency and by promoting continuous improvement. So let's see now the types of controls. The preventive controls. 
these are to prevent undesirable events from occurring example policies separation of duties access controls if you put a firewall these are all the examples of preventive controls so you put policy and procedures everybody has to follow that process uh, the separation of duties when compatible duties are separated and the people who are working together uh, to avoid any conflict of interest in that because similarly if you are paying something so the, the, the cash responsibility of someone else and the approving responsibility and using of that service responsibility on someone else so you need to segregate the duties so there are many ways you can separate the duties to implement a preventive control access controls in order to access a system or premises put controls uh, like we discussed the example of gate, uh, gate passes, you are moving an object, there is a control, preventive control that everything is checked and then the thing is moving from one premises to another premises. Similarly, firewall, protecting your system from uh, the, the uninformed and, and uh, malicious activities and attacks. Detective controls to detect an error or ir irregularity which has occurred. Periodic reconciliations are the types of uh, detective controls. Budget variances, when you discuss the reasons for variations in those budgets. Uh, physical inventory counts are type, uh, is another example of detective control. The corrective controls are to correct or detect errors or irregularity. For example, blocking of a card or bank account when you have done a transaction or a suspicious, suspicious transaction is done and the uh, system blocks the card immediately. So this is a corrective control. Or a sprinkler system, as we discussed before, the smoke uh, detector identifies that there is some smoke, a risk of fire, and it's immediately the sprinkler system turns on and put the fire off. So what are different types of internal control frameworks? COSO framework, which is created in 1992, you can refer to my video on the COSO framework so you can get, get a, a basic understanding of the COSO framework and the, how it, is, it has been uh, started. There is a COSO ERM framework as well. Uh, COSO is mostly used internal control framework actually and I am giving the link uh, and, and of, of my video here. Uh, COVID IT control framework is another framework which is more related to the information technology. ISO control frameworks like ISO 9001 is widely globally used for quality auditing and ISO 27001 as a, another uh, IT control framework uh, example. Also the, the, this ISO uh, provides more uh, standards if you go and go, they, they go and review that uh, from their website the International Organization of Standards you will get to know that there are so many other good standards available or frameworks available which you can use to enhance your control framework. Now the most interesting part of this domain too is the risk of fraud, the fourth objective which we'll review now. Recognize the fraud risk, types of frauds and the potential for occurrence of fraud, that is red flags and determine whether fraud risk require special consideration when conducting an engagement. The internal audit activity must evaluate the potential for occurrence of fraud and how the organization manages fraud risk. The types of fraud an organization face can be many forms, can be of many forms and types. A team, uh, a term occupational fraud is uh, generally used uh, for frauds committed by organizations, employees. For example, uh, this kind of uh, fraud can be put into three categories and these are also called the white collar crimes. Uh, the three categories are asset misappropriation, corruption and financial statement fraud. So what, it, what is asset misappropriation? This includes frauds related to cash and inventory and other assets. For example, theft of cash, fraudulent disbursement, skimming or misuse of assets. Corruption includes the conflict of interest, bribery, illegal gratuities, and economic extortions. Uh, the financial statement frauds include income or assets, uh, overstatements or understatements by concealing, manipulating figures, fictitious revenues, improper asset valuations, and disclosures. 
So how to determine whether fraud risk required a special consideration when conducting an engagement? This depends on the nature and type of operation, process, function or entity being audited, the historical data and planning data suggest if you need a special consideration for fraud. So risk of fraud needs a special consideration if there is a history of fraud in the area which is subject to audit or there are previously reported findings highlighted risk of current or potential fraud risk. The area in involved like cash or high value items or very complex investment schemes also carries a high risk of fraud. So thank you so much for your time. This concludes the domain two. Uh, if you will co cover all the videos which I have referred in this video, combine it with, with that, I think that complements your understanding over uh, the second domain. Uh, but in any ways, if you have any queries or you want to get an online coaching or you want to get, uh, get some sessions uh, to improve your understanding or answer your queries, please get in touch with me. Uh, I'm giving my email address. You can approach me as well and uh, as an individual or as a group and hopefully I'll try to facilitate as much as possible. So thank you so much. Keep uh, watching my videos, subscribe the channel, share my videos so other students can get benefit as well. Thank you so much.